Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, standing in our own way, whether it has to do with money, career, or health. When we set goals and have the best intentions, we still can make bad choices despite knowing better. Well, our next guest says there's a science to it, and it's called self-sabotage. And transformation coach Ashra Bennett wants to help you stop it from ruining your life. Hi, Ashra. Hi, Audrey. Good morning. So what typically gets in the way of making these lasting changes, whether it's health, career, or money goals? It's a really interesting point. Habitually, it's, it sits in and around what we believe, our boundaries or lack of boundaries and our values. And that's systemically uh, entrenched in what we've modeled from leaders, um, educational institutions, our extended families, our parents, our aunts, our uncles. So what would be the first step if you want a transformation plan? How do you create that environment that's conducive to success? Well, it's a really good point. The first thing that I would actually invite the viewers to ask themselves is to have a look at what they believe and why they believe it. More often than not, when we are in a self-sabotage pattern is that we may desire something, but we have a conflicting belief around it. And I'll give an example. We may desire to have monetary wealth, but we actually have a belief that in order to have it, we have to hustle hard and kind of um, overextend ourselves in order to have the abundance in which that we desire. So the belief isn't sustainable for what we're actually working towards. So first thing would be definitely looking at the belief patterns that you actually hold and working out, are they your beliefs? Have you created them for yourself? Or are they a belief that you've modeled from someone in and around you, whether it be circumstantial, circumstantial or environmental? Then once you've had a, an idea around what you believe, then look at what you value and ask yourself that um, important question around why you value it. As we age, our values hierarchy shift and change accordingly to what we desire and the life path in which that we're moving towards. So if we really want to change our habitual habitat and our environment, we need to come back to basics and asking ourselves, what do we believe and why do we believe it? What do we value and why do we value it? So that we can start to correlate and see where the gaps are in our exchanges between the two. So, you know, we always often hear that phrase, you know, you've got to get out of your own way. Why is it that we self-sabotage? Why is it that we'll make choices even when we know it may be bad for us? So humans have a tendency to be uh, two things, creatures of habit and have an addiction to doubt. We doubt the unknown because we don't have a trajectory on how to be, see, do, or have. And, you know, the other part is that we we often are looking for that sense of security. So we stick to things that are familiar, even though they may be prickly and uncomfortable for us. So that addiction to doubt is it creates a stagnancy, even though that we may desire to move forward, taking that next leap of faith in ourselves and our own ability can be very daunting. And so sometimes Times we will actually self-sabotage, not intentionally. It can be a subconscious uh, mm. response where we actually don't do anything, even though we desire to create different. Any advice on how to stop ourselves from slipping into that bad behavior? Yeah, I love that question. I think having a mindful awareness in and around what you're wanting to work towards and being really clear and checking in with yourself regularly. More often than not, we're taught how to create goals for ourselves, but we actually don't have an accountability, a self-accountability in play to monitor that we're on track to what we're wanting to work towards, whether that's behaviorally, emotionally, mentally, physiologically, spiritually, whatever the case may be, to make sure that we are working to our most optimal potential and whatever sets our heart alight a in the fire. And in doing so, that kind of keeps you in a steady pace to observe where any kind of destructive or self-sabotage patterns show up, you can kind of notice it and ask yourself, well, why am I actually fearing moving forward? Or what's playing out here right now that's making me uncomfortable and question that next step? Yeah, and as we know, when we have kind of those thoughts and beliefs, it can also have effect on our physical health. Absolutely. You know, our beliefs do definitely impact our biology. You know, there is significant um, neuroscience and biochemistry evidence that actually shows not only stress is a significant impact on the physiological um, disposition of how we how we feel, how we go about navigating things, that. 
Um, if we don't keep our emotional or mental uh, well-being in check, that this is where a lot of systemic chronic diseases actually manifest and can go undetected for oh, wow. very long yeah. uh, periods of time. So it's very important that we stay across it. Ashra, great information. A lot of insights there on that self-sabotage. But if you want more on self-healing, you can visit ashraglobal.org. YCL will be right back.